Let's look at 6.1, which is continuous random variables. And we are looking at the standard normal curve. So just a couple of review items. So one of them is continuous random variable. So remember that is the random variables of RV. Continuous means um, you can have as many as you want. So there's infinitely many possibilities. So we're going to write has infinitely many many values and the collection of those values is non counted or non countable not to count so we can't count them because there's an infinite amount of them Normal distribution, so this is this normal bell curve that's symmetrical, where you have your mean in the middle, mu, and then you look at how many standard deviations above, how many standard deviations below, and we're also going to review z-scores. So a z-score is how many standard deviations is it away from your mean. If it's above, it's a positive z-score. If it's below, it's a negative z-score. Thank goodness we don't have to use this, um, but that is a formula that deals with the normal distribution curve. Okay, and we are looking at continuous probability distribution. So it's a normal CDF. So remember yesterday how we did binomial PDFs and CDFs? So today we'll be looking at normal CDFs. Okay, let's look at the density curve. So when we have this, there is an area within this, and the area corresponds to probability. So density curve, graph of a continuous probability distribution that satisfies the following properties. First one is the area under the curve is one. And the reason it's one is because area corresponds directly with probability. Okay. So number two, um, which is kind of just what I just said, kind of just what I said, yeah. There is a correspondence between area and probability. The thing with area is if you think about the area of this, you normally think about area as length times width, right? But whenever we have a curve like this, it isn't that easy. Because you might be finding uh, like the area of this area right here. And if you do that, you can't do a length times a width. So then there's another way of doing this by using z-scores. There are three properties of the standard normal distribution. So one of them is 
It's bell shaped and symmetrical. So that is dealing with the shape. And the mean is zero and the standard deviation is one. So this can be written as N zero one. That's how you would represent saying that's a normal distribution. Zero is your mean, one is your standard deviation. So not all the time are like, um, they're not always zero and one. So that's why we're using Z scores because let's think about the IQ score. Whenever you have an IQ score, your mean is 100, and your standard deviation, I believe it's 15. So you'd have to use z-scores in order to calculate the area. But one um, distribution that is easy to calculate because it would be length times width is a uniform distribution. So a continuous random variable has a uniform distribution if its values are spread evenly over the range of possibilities. Whenever you think about the word uniform, what is that? What do you think about? If two things are uniform, then what are they? What? Say? Alright, somebody say? Just say close. Okay, so if your school has a uniform, then what does that mean about everybody? They're all dressed alike. They're all the same. Exactly. Yes. So their probabilities are the exact same. So our graph is no longer a bell shape. It is actually a rectangle. Because all of the probabilities are the exact same. It's not like this where the probabilities go from the bottom, you know, go up and then down. They're all the exact same. So to find the area of those probabilities, it's really easy because you can do length times width. So the area of the curve becomes one when we make the height equal to the value of one over the range. So if you think about area is length times width or height times width. I don't really like that. I usually use length times width or um, base times height, right? But whenever we think about this, we want its height to equal the value of one over the range. Well, the range is how far away. So like zero to let's say five. So your range would be five. So then, in order to find your height, you need to know, well, what times 5 is going to give us 1? So the way you find it is by using this formula, that height equals 1 over the range. So I want to find the height, which in this case, it's probability. So this would be the height equals 1 over 5. And as a decimal, that's just 0 0.2. All 
right? So it goes all the way up to 0 0.2. So the area of this, which the area of the probability, you know how they're interchangeable, is supposed to equal 1. So 5 times 0 0.2, that equals 1. Because the total area under the density curve is equal to 1, there is a correspondence between area and probability. We use those interchangeably. In pre-cal, you find the area under the curve. Or maybe that's more like in calculus, you'll find the area under the curve. To find the area, you multiply the height times the width. So we'll look at this uniform distribution. A statistics professor plans classes so carefully that the lengths of her classes are uniformly distributed, distributed between 50 minutes and 52 minutes. Any time between 50 and 52 is possible, and all the possible values are equally likely. If we randomly select one of her classes and let x be the random variable corresponding to the length of that class, the next has the following distribution when graphed. That was a whole lot of words, right? So let's look at this graph and kind of determine where these numbers are coming from. So class length. How long are the classes? They're between 50 and 52 minutes. And what is the probability of each of those times? They're equally likely, exactly, equally likely. So they all have to have the same. So the probability of 50 has to equal the probability of 50.5, has to equal the probability of 51, and so on, right? All of them are equally likely. And so on. So the range is how many minutes? is that range two minutes so in order to find the area or the height the way this was found by doing height equals one over the range so this was one over two so that's where that came from So Kim has scheduled a job interview immediately after her statistics class. If the class runs longer than 51 and a half, she will be late for the interview. What is the probability she will be late? So 51 and a half is right here. So we want to know, so basically a 30 second time is going to make her late for the interview. I, I don't know if that's realistic, but anyway, for the sake of the probability, problem we're finding what the probability she will be late so probability that x is greater than 51.5 x is our random variable so the random time that class ends being greater than 51.5 is going to be the area of this section right here so you just do the length times the width so we know, what is the length of this? Half. And then the width is half. So what does that equal? So basically, a quarter. So the probability that she will be late is 0 0.25. Okay, the next one was probability that today's statistics class will be no longer than 51 minutes. So no longer than 51 minutes. So how do we write that as a uh, variable? Uh, I mean, as an inequality. Probability that X is 
Is it less than or equal to? Yeah. Okay, so that area would be here, this area. So 51 and below. So to find that area, we do length times width. So what's the length here? Well, isn't it just half of it? If you look at it, it's just half of it. If we look at it, when we multiply, it'd be 1 times 0. 0.5, which is just half. Okay, that's all we're doing on uniform distribution. We're going to skip the ne next example. Just mark it out. And we're going to go to standard normal because that's what we're focusing on. Okay, so we have the standard normal distribution. We are going to look at z-score. And we are also going to use a table. And I handed that out. And we can also use the calculator. All right, let's look at using the table first. To find probabilities when given z-scores. So remember a z-score is how many standard deviations above or below the mean a given value is. Okay, so if we look at our, let's see, my table. Okay, we have two, uh, one that says positive z-scores. So the positive z-scores are above the mean. So see how this is our mean, which we are classifying as zero because we're just looking at that z-score. So if your zero, your um, z-score is zero, that means it exactly is at the mean. And so we're always looking at area to the left. But we can find area to the right. If you think about it, the whole thing is supposed to equal one. If we want to find this little unshaded area to the right, then we do one minus the area to the left. And that's how you'd find the area to the right. So we'll do the same thing as with the other one we would look at. Okay, the Z is, let's say it's at 1.54. You'd go down to 1.5 and then over to four. So that would be the z-score for 1.54. It does give you some critical values here. Let me make that a little clearer. Um, for, let's say a 95% confidence level or area of 95%, no, this is area of 95, what the z-score would be. So we'd want to look at this side. Okay, the other side is our negative z-scores. And the reason they're negative is because they are below the mean, a number below the mean. And again, we're looking at the area to the left. So there is a limitation to the table because it only gives you to two decimal places, to the hundredths place. So that's why we um, use the calculator as well. All right, so let's see. It says um, the table gives us 
the cumulative area from the left up to the vertical line above a specific value of Z. So this would be your vertical line. So anytime you do your, um, you're finding your area under the curve, your probability, I want you to go ahead and draw your standard um, normal distribution curve and then draw your little line so you know where it's at. It can be used if it is a standard normal distribution. The mean is zero, standard deviation is one. One page of the, of the table has a negative Z scores and the other has positive. Each value in the body of the table is a cumulative, cumulative, I can't even say that. I say it. Cumulative, there we go. Area from the left up to the vertical boundary above a specific Z score. Avoid confusion between Z scores and areas. Z-score is your distance along the horizontal scale of the normal distribution curve. And the area is the region under the curve. So let's say it's like this. If you're looking at area, you're looking at the probability, which is area. So this would be the area under the curve. Your z-score would be your number that is right underneath it. So in this case, this one would be negative. Okay, the, the part of the z-score denoting hundreds is found across the top row of the table. So this is your um, negative 3.4 one would be right here. Okay, we're going to, we'll be able to use our calculator. Given areas bounded on the left and bounded on the right by vertical lines above a specific value, we can use the second bars, which is distribution again. And we're going to use the normal CDF. Find the two scores separated by a comma, then in the parentheses. If you're going, if you don't have, I think our calculator does it a little different. It allows us to not have to do that. It automatically puts that number in there for us. And the reason it puts that in there for us, because negative one E to the 99, that's a really, really, really small number. It's going to infinity. Um, so that's why they use that. And so your upper would be your z-score. Then that would be your mean. That would be your standard deviation. You can change them on here. Okay, the notation. Let's say we want to find probability that A is less than Z is less than B. Then that is representing the probability that it's between A and B. Probability that Z is greater than A denotes probability that it's greater than A. And then less than A is if it says Z is less than A. So the way these are in a graph so if we have the normal distribution like this, so let's say you want to find the area between A and B. And you're finding the area like that. Greater than A, so let's say A is right here, it's going to be 
everything that's greater than A. And then less than A is everything to the left. So we have to know how to find each one of those. From our tables, we'll only get this one, but we can use that to help us find any of the others. Because the area of the whole curve is one. All right. So it's probably getting any single exact value is zero because the area of a single value would be a vertical line. That would not be an area. Okay. So these two things will be the same, whether it says less than equal to or just less than. They are the same. Same notation. All right, let's look at the example. Find the probability of a value less than a particular z-score. If thermometers have an average mean reading of zero degrees and standard deviation of one for freezing water, and if one thermometer is randomly selected, find the probability that at the freezing point of water, the reading is less than 1.58 degrees. First thing you want to do is draw your curve. We know in the middle is our mean, which in this case is zero. And it's, this is our z-score. So that is above our mean, 1.58. I'm going to go ahead and draw the line all the way to the curve. So we're going to know the probability that the reading X is less than 1.58. So that means I'm going to go to the left and find the area of the region to the left of that line. Okay. So we're going to use our table. All right, so this is a positive z-score. So we're going to go to 1.58. So on the left, you're going to go to 1.5. And across the top, you're going to go to 0.8. Do y'all see it? Okay. So I'm just going to kind of look at 1.5, and then you'd go over to 0 0.08, just 0 0.9429. So that's the area or the probability. We can also use a calculator. So let's look at the calculator. So go to second bars and go down to normal CDF. And it says the lower, so that means the smallest number, which that's true. It's going to go this way for a long time. Our upper would be the 1.58. And this one already is a standard normal, so 0, 1 is perfect. And see how it puts it in there for us? See how it comes up with the exact answer? Pretty cool. All right, so we know how to do the ones to the left of it. So now we need to do a one, one to the right. So let's go to 
the next page. To find the probability of getting a value above a particular score. So this is whenever you're trying to find the probability of above a particular score. So our table gets the, um, to the area to the left, and this is what I was talking about, the whole area is one. So you do one minus the area to the left. So this example, we're going to skip that for now. Using the thermometers from the previous example, find the probability of randomly selecting a thermometer that reads above negative 1.23. So draw your curve. You know this is zero. So negative 1.23 is to the left. And it says reading above it. So going to go this way. So probability that X is greater than negative 1.23. So let's look at our formula, I mean our table. So negative one point, so you go to the negative z-score, negative 1.23, it's this, 0 0.1093. So the probability of getting exactly, or going to the left, so this area right here is the one we just found. Oh, sorry. So if this area is 0 0.1093, then to find the area to the right, we do 1 minus. Okay, we can do it in the calculator. Let's see. So go to second bars, normal CDF. Okay, so I know that my lower is going to be the 1.23. My upper is going to be that one that had the E to the 99, negative one. Where would... Mm, wouldn't it be positive? Sorry. Positive one? Yeah. Um, e to the... I don't remember how to do that. And then the blue double E? Yeah. There we go. Good. Blue double E. To the 99. And so that comes out to the same thing. All right, so let's go. We're going to skip that example. The last example that we're going to do gosh, is how to find the area between the two z-scores. So on this one, find the probability that a chosen thermometer reads between negative 2 degrees and 1.5 degrees. So negative 2 and 1.5, so we're finding the area between them. So you would need to find the probability that X equals the 1.5, I mean not equals, um, less than. 
you would find this whole thing and then subtract this little one from it. So minus the probability that X is less than two. So we'll go to, uh, that should be a negative right there. We'll go to the 1.5. So this one is 0 0.9, oh, where'd it go? 332. And then subtract the negative 2 from it. Zero point two two eight, zero point zero two two eight. So zero point nine three three two minus zero point zero two two eight. We can do this in the calculator too. So let's go do that normal CDF again. So what would be our lower limit? Which one's lower? Negative two. Which one's the upper? So it should be negative two to 1.5. Still have our mean and our standard deviation. Comes out to the same thing. Just this one is not rounded. All right. And that is it. Is that hard to do that? Say this.